Since the beginning of the Flat Earth Awakening, there have been many attempts to model the motions of the heavens on top of flat projections. It gave us the circular model, the square model, and other projections like the diamond. All have failed so far to make an accurate and verifiable model that shows what is actually going on up there. It is our research, modeling, and experiments that have made it very clear to us that all current models are wrong. The main reason for that is because they all start with the wrong premise that the tropics form the actual paths of a physical object like the sun or moon. Most flat earthers also have very little hands-on experience in astronomy and proper experiments which led to an immense pile of incorrect assumptions and false claims regarding their model commitment and bias towards their current held beliefs. To show in a simple way that the Sun, for example, is not a physical object, we have measured the disk size of the Sun when it moved directly overhead. That result ended up in a 39.8 mile diameter sun. That is a very small object compared to the size of the Earth. If you use that size on any projection on dates like the equinoxes, when almost everybody has a sunrise at 90 degrees east, you will soon find out that most azimuth angles will never work with an object that close and small. If you take any flat projection and place the small sun on the equator on the equinox and place yourself at sunrise, on almost all latitudes, the sun is directly east of your position. If you were able to move north or south in seconds from top to bottom, that small object will remain fixed at its azimuth angle on the horizon, which by rule of geometry makes it impossible to be a small physical object. This led us to do more research into the properties of the sun and its behavior in the sky. We have come across so many false claims and highly questionable ideas about the motion of the sun and moon and stars that we find it's our duty to correct these claims. Some claim the sun moves in straight lines, which is a false claim as shown in the following images. and it can be verified by tracking the speed of the sun on its azimuth and declination in a 12-hour time span. There have also been claims that the sun moves in a circular path, which is also incorrect. Although, when you go to see the Arctic midnight sun, it gives the impression of a circular path since any observer has to rotate a full 360 degrees to follow the sun.
but also with a circular path, you end up with the same problems with regards to sun angles on any given day of the year. The hyperbolic paraboloid shape of the sun analemma is not just a path over a year time span. But that same motion is found in the sun's 24-hour cycle. This drift pattern becomes obvious when you track the sun with high-end trackers like Los Mondi trackers and just track the azimuth of the sun and do not use the correction adjustments of the tracker so that it runs on its nominal speed of 15 degrees an hour. The drift pattern is also equal and opposite on both sides of the equator, which means that this small 39.8 mile diameter sun is moving across the sky at various observed speeds north and south of the equator. After two years of research and modeling, we were stuck and couldn't make it work to model the sun or any object accurately. We started from scratch again. After looking at photos of crepuscular rays of the sun, which all flat earthers have seen a million times, we came to a revelation many, if not all, flatheads have overlooked. When you look at crepuscular rays piercing through clouds over a lake or plain, for example, the angles of the rays end up at the actual light source, which is just above the clouds in most cases. But we know the sun is not right above the clouds. We started wondering what someone would see looking back from the other side and if he or she would see the same thing. Imagine a scenario where you see these rays over a lake. Those rays are lighting up a spot on the water. Now put another observer right across the lake looking back at you. Can he see those rays in that lit up spot on the water like in this animation? Let's take that one step further and give the primary observer seeing the rays a long pole with a mirror attached at the end. If he were to reflect that ray hitting the water to the observer on the other side, would he then see a reflection of the sun in that mirror? Keep in mind the distance apart here is only 40 kilometers and where the sun should be for the observer on the other side. To make these light angles in 3D software you will need, like we used here, a local light source. But in reality, when you move to the other side of the lake and turn around to look back, you will have the sun at your back. therefore making it impossible to see the rays in the first scenario or the reflection of the sun in the mirror. 
We have therefore come to the logical conclusion that those rays are personal for any observer, as someone looking back cannot see the same thing because of his position towards the sun. Now if those rays are personal and cannot be seen by anyone else but the observer himself, that indicates that the sun is a personal or local objective projection. This can be verified by anyone by doing the opposite side crepuscular rays experiment, like in this animation, and see that someone looking back at someone seeing those rays cannot and will not see the same thing. A rainbow acts the same way as the sun, being that you can only see it at a specific angle, and you cannot walk around a rainbow as it will always move away from you. And you cannot see the opposite side of a rainbow. A rainbow is a source projection, and its source is the sun. Therefore, if the sun is also a source projection of an unknown source, we can start modeling the path of the sun for each observer on Earth. We did this by taking just one longitude, that being the zero UTC meridian on Earth. and inputted the data from observations for azimuth and declination of the sun and traced the sun object for that location for a year for each tenth latitude north and south of the equator and just let the data run its course for a year. But the model became so heavy with data and tiny hair-thin tracer lines that even with a super machine we couldn't render the result. After some trial and error, we finally managed to get a clear view on the end result. And even with our sun being an equal distance to the observer, the shape and layout ended up in a torus field around the Earth. We still have to figure out how to do proper 3D vectoring to get all the observed speeds and changes in the motion of the sun creating a more true shape. But it became very clear to us that based on Ken Wheeler's research into magnetic holography that the sun we see is projected into the electromagnetic field in the sky. The objective sun follows the magnetic field lines that are unique for each location on Earth. So the real sun is a source coming from outside of the so-called firmament, which probably uses light polarization that is projected into the magnetic field and rendered through the atmosphere. It is no coincidence that all sun arcs combined create this torus-like field, and this is version 1.0. As soon as we find out how to use equal distance 3D vectoring and a formula on the angles and the data sheets from observations, we can then get a true shape in second by second motion in the field lines. This torus field is by no means a stationary field as the sun moves north and south during the year. We animated this in what we call the cosmic breath of flat earth and this shows that by simply increasing the current in the field from the north pole you then push the field south and by lowering the current, it flows back north again. It can also be pushed back and forth by an outside magnetic field from beyond the Antarctic, 90 degrees south latitude. The southern magnetic anomaly is also a moving anomaly, and who knows what more lies beyond the southern latitudes, all of which have influence on the field. From a creation standpoint, it must have a function as well. If we animate all sun positions over a year, the animation gives the impression of a wave going around the field like an outside source pushing and pulling on the field and projecting its image, that being the sun or moon, in it.
We do not know yet what, where, and how this outside source is mechanically working, so to speak, but from an engineer's perspective, everything that works like a machine or clock must have a basic principle and laws of physics to discover its nature. We just have to figure out where to go from here and what experiments can be derived to either build on this or modify the basic concept. With this concept, we can boldly say we have created a working flat earth model that can be held up to scrutiny, evaluation, testing, and experimenting to either verify or debunk certain aspects of this model. It is therefore with great honor and humility that we present this first and only working flat earth model with an actual base in geometry, science, and observations. In the coming weeks, we will be releasing ground views of this model to show that current sun angles are dead on correct.